Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. We were discussing ergonomic assessment tools for work posture. In the previous segment, we discussed rapid upper limb assessment or the RULA method. In this segment, we will discuss a similar method that is rapid entire body assessment or RIVA method. And we had discussed this fundamental point in the previous segment as well that people do not deliberately assume poor work postures. They are forced to do so because of the characteristics of the task and poor ergonomics design of jobs and workstations. So that is why it is important to assess the tasks and jobs and workstations and see how might they contribute to the, uh, to the poor work postures and redesign the tasks or workstations uh, if required. So we had discussed us and ruler methods in the previous segments and now we will discuss the Reba method. In the Reba method, the data are collected about the body posture, forces, type of movement, repetition and coupling. So some of these factors are the same as or in the ruler method like posture, forces and movement and, and in addition there are some other factors as well. Basic idea in assigning scores to the postures is the same as was in VAS and the ruler method. That is, as the posture moves away from the neutral position, the risk score increases. So, so the more the deviation from the neutral posture, the higher will be the risk. So the higher will be the score. In ruler, we had four action levels. In, in Reba, we will have five action levels. So the RIBA can be used to assess postures where the whole body is being used. It can be used for different types of postures for static, dynamic, rapidly changing and unstable postures. And it can be used to assess postures where either animate or inanimate loads are being handled. So how to select posture for assessment using the RIBA method? So it could be most frequently repeated posture, it could be the longest maintained posture and these are the most important points generally and either of these uh, is used to select the posture but it could be a posture that uh, requires a lot of muscular activity or a lot of forces are involved. unstable or awkward or the posture that is most likely to be improved by intervention, control measures or other changes. And practically we can use a combination of these factors as well to select the posture to be assessed. So the body parts are divided into two groups in the RIBA method. Group A includes trunk neck and legs and group B includes upper arms, lower arms and wrists. So that is the flow of, uh, uh, of the scoring using the, the method. So in group A we have trunk, neck and legs and in group B we have upper arm, lower arm and wrists. So we use table A to, to get one score for trunk, neck and legs, add load and force score to that to get score A. Similarly for the upper arm, lower arm and wrist score, we, we use table B, add the score for coupling to, to reach score B, then we look up table C using score A and B to get score C and we add activity score to the score C to to get the final reverse score and then finally convert this, this score into any five of the five, to convert it into any of the five action levels. So first group A, trunk, neck and legs. So I won't go into too many details uh, of the scoring as it is very similar to, to the ruler method. So 
for the neutral posture, we have lower scores. And as we deviate from the neutral posture, the score increases. So for example, in this case, for zero to 20 degree flexion, our extension score will be two. So as these angles increase, so does the score. And we add one if uh, there is movement in other than medial plane, so it could be twisting or side bending. So we can have a maximum score of five for the trunk. Similarly, the upright posture for the neck, similar to the, to the trunk, like in this case. So the upright posture is the neutral posture. So same is true for the neck posture as well. And as we deviate from this neutral posture, the score increases and we will add one to, to this score if there is twisting or side bending, that is any movement of the neck in a plane other than the medial plane. Uh, similarly, similarly for the legs, we have a, a score of one if both uh, legs are being used for, for standing or, or there is walking or sitting involved. And if there is unilateral weight bearing, that is any of uh, any one of the two legs is being used for weight bearing, then we, we have a score of two and we add one. If uh, the knees are bent between 30 and 60 degree, and we add two if knees are bent greater than 60 degree. So we are talking about flexion in both these cases. So we have uh, reached uh, here. We have to look up table A. So we have to simply match the score of trunk and neck and legs to, to, to read the score, uh, score A. Uh, before that, we have to add the load and force score as well. So if the load being handled is less than 5 kg, nothing is added for 5 to 10. One is added for uh, greater than 10 kg, two is added. And if there is some shock or rapid buildup of the force um, because of handling the load, then we add one to, to this score. So now we have read the score. A. So whatever value we got from table A, we added load and force score to, to reach here. That is score A. The group B includes upper arms, lower arms and wrists. So again, the basic idea is the neutral posture. So as we deviate from this posture, the scores keep on increasing and we will add one if there is movement uh, in some other plane. So like uh, like abduction or rotation and one is added if the shoulder is raised as well. So we can have a maximum score of six for the upper arm. This is the neutral posture for the lower arm and as we deviate from this posture, we, we keep on increasing the score. So for 62, 100 degree flexion score is one and for less than 60 degree or greater than and a degree flexion score is two. So here we have score one, but beyond this in any direction, score will be two. Same idea for the wrist, the neutral posture, and as we deviate from this, the score will increase and we will add one if the uh, wrist is uh, uh, side bending or twisting as well. So we will look up table B using the score of upper arm, the lower arm and is to, to reach a final score for these three parts. We will add the coupling scores. If the coupling or the grip is good, nothing will be added. If coupling is fair, we will add one. If the coupling or grip is poor, we will add two. And if it is not, three. And you can read the definitions of good, fair, poor, and unacceptable coupling score. So we have uh, now reached score B. If we add coupling score to the score obtained from table B here, we get score B. And finally, we use table C to, to get the grand score. So for example, if the group A score was uh, for example, seven and to B score was let's suppose eight. So grand score will be will be ten. 
and we will add activity score to the score obtained from table C. So if more than one or more body parts are static, that is the whole the posture for greater than one minute, we will add one. If, uh, the, if the frequency or the repetition is more than four times per minute, we will add one. And if the action causes rapid, large uh, ch range changes in posture, we will add one. So we can have a maximum score. 12 from this table plus three from here. So we can have a maximum score of 15 for, for the We match score A and B to get score C. We will add activity score to that to get the REBA score. And finally, we will convert this uh, REBA score into one of the five activity levels or sorry, the action levels or the action categories. So if we have a REBA score of one, that is action level zero, no action is required. And as we move downward, as the REBA score increases, so severity of the poster increases and we have the highest severity for a score 11 to 15, and that is action level four. So how we can use the RIVA method to, to score a posture? There are uh, different software avail available for that. And we can have some assessment sheets like uh, the one shown. So here we are given the different uh, body parts and the corresponding angles as they are used in the RIVA method. So for example, in the group A, we had trunk, neck and legs. So using the scores for the trunk and neck and legs, we can have a score A from this table A. So we call it to posture score A, we add force and load score to that to, to get the final score A. Similarly, for the second group of body parts, uh, we can use this table B. So we had upper arm, lower arm and this, so we can get a score from this table B. So we call it posture score B. We add coupling score to that posture score B to get the score B. And we use both the score B and score A and to look up the table C and finally get the score C. By simply matching the score A and B, we can get a score a C and we can add the activity score to this uh, score obtained from table C to get the final REBA score. And finally, we can convert this final REBA score to one of the uh, one of the five action levels or action categories. So for score one, there is no risk. For score two or three, the, there is low risk. And for, for a score of four to seven, there is medium risk. For eight to 10, high risk. And 11 plus is very high risk. So according to the score, we can decide the uh, action plan regarding that task or posture. Thank you.